as uh, the introduction said, I work in the Renewable and Sustainable Energy Division of the Department of Communications, Energy and Natural Resources, with responsibility for renewable uh, transport and renewable heat, uh, both areas germane uh, to the topic we're discussing today. Um, as was my presentation, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly rehearse uh, the policy context of the, of the directive, of the proposed directive. Um, and I suppose to paraphrase uh, Julius Caesar, I, I, I suppose I come to expose the directive, not to praise it or endorse it. And I'll give you a, an update on, um, the, on the discussions held uh, to date um, at a council working party and where I see it going next. I suppose everybody here will be familiar with the, the 2020 20, uh, climate and energy targets. Um, and, and the two directives um, um, uh, relevant to that at the moment that we're discussing are the Renewable Energy Directive, which is, ascribes Ireland a 16% target from renewable sources, uh, broken down by 10% for a legal transport for, or legal target for transport in common with all other member states. Uh, we'll also meet that through 40% uh, uh, renewable electricity, pr principally wind, and then 12% heat. And that the Fuel Quality Directive also requires us to achieve a 6% reduction in uh, life cycle uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 2020 in comparison to 2010. The, the biofuels, or the renewable energy, I was going to say the biofuels directive, but the renewable energy directive does not require us to use biofuels to meet the 10% target. Um, uh, but if we do, um, it sets out a number of sustainability criteria. Um, such as we're not, um, the prohibition on using biofuels or counting biofuels towards that target that have come from certain uh, types of categories of land. Um, and that biofuel must also um, achieve uh, a greenhouse gas savings over, over the life cycle. Um, the, re the reality is that biofuels are going to play a, a significant role in Ireland and most other member states meeting the 10% target. And indeed, we'll have a significant role uh, beyond 2020 and towards 2050. But with uh, post-2020, we'd anticipate a, a far greater proportion of biofuels, uh, second generation biofuels or advanced, advanced biofuels, and very, very little uh, biofuels from, uh, from uh, sourced from crops. And, one of, um, and since the directive, uh, the burden um, on biofuels has increased or is expected to increase due largely, I think, uh, to a slower than anticipated uptake in electric vehicles, both here and throughout Europe. But again, it would anticipate um, by 2050, um, they, would, they would have about 60% of the market um, in Ireland in, in any event. I suppose I, I've mentioned this before about the sustainability criteria, but the, one, one missing element of the sustainability criteria is, uh, is the indirect land use change. It's mentioned in, in, in directive, but not provided for. And likewise, in our national legislation, um, it, it, um, the sustainability criteria are transposed into Irish legislation, but not so um, indirect, uh, accommodating indirect land use change. Both directives required a uh, report from the Commission uh, by 2010, and that report has been provided. The, um, I suppose, just briefly about indirect land use change, I suppose the, the theory behind it is that the increased demand for biofuels in Europe um, displaces agricultural activity to land um, that was previously not used for agriculture and, and uh, releases uh, greenhouse gases that were previously um, in, in, in a carbon sink or, and indeed methane um, sink. Um, the IFPRI study in 2011 presented to the Commission estimated that 70% of the direct emission savings from, that could be achieved from biofuels would be, uh, would be negated um, where I look to be taken into account. Um, and this is obviously a very serious issue. Um, but indeed, it's, it's a global issue, and in fact, it's probably bigger than biofuels itself. It's, it comes down to land use and land use change and agricultural policy and, uh, and food policy. Um, so it, it, in many ways, it, it's far bigger than 
biofuels and addressing the biofuel issue is, is probably just a step, a, a small step in, in, in that direction. It also, the issue of ILUC is hampered to some extent that it can't be uh, accurately measured directly sorry, and, and relies on modelling. And so obviously it's subject to the weaknesses of modelling and depending on the, 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 the assumptions and the framework um, underpinning those, those modelling. Now, this is, this, is, this is from the impact assessment that accompanied the directive. Um, the, the Commission, in coming to its proposal, considered uh, five different policy options, ranging from doing nothing, um, which would, would result in 22% greenhouse gas emissions, but indirect land use change emissions uh, for, of 48 million tonnes. Um, the second option considered was going immediately to a 60% uh, minimum greenhouse gas emissions target, and that would automatically rule out soybean, rapeseed, and in the absence of methane uh, capture, uh, palm oil. Um, it also assumed that model or assessment assumed a high uptake of electric vehicles and a high uptake of, of double counted biofuels. This would, uh, this would result in 56% greenhouse gas emissions um, and a 70% reduction in ILUC to about uh, 14 million tonnes. Um, the third option was looking at increased um, um, intensification of, uh, of, of agriculture and uh, cultivation of, of land in third countries, um, and it required country level and project level intervention. Uh, so the principle underpinning that, that no additional land would be, if, um, would be set aside for biofuel production. Uh, the that was not possible to model because um, it would need a global framework to, um, to, to, in order to implement. Uh, the, the fourth option uh, was to include the indirect land use change um, emissions in, in, um, in the sustainability criteria. This would have the benefit of reducing uh, um, greenhouse gas emissions by 70% and uh, reducing um, emissions by um, 85 percent or 80 percent to 8 million tons with techni technological limits on on bioethanol and the ability to blend that, that those high levels of, of ethanol um, meant that uh, th this was this was ruled out for the time being as as well as the difficulty I referred to earlier in relation to modeling and I suppose the the, the, the the compromise solution or the was was option e um, and combined with options B and D, or elements of options B, B and D, and that would be to um, limit the contribution that certain food-based uh, biofuels could, could contribute to national targets. That, and that would is estimated to say 44% in greenhouse gas emissions and 20 million tonnes in ILOC. That's roughly half what the Do Nothing um, uh, proposal would, would, would envisage. The, the stated aims of, of the proposal are to, to cap at 5% um, of, towards the 10% the, the target. And it's important to, to note that any biofuels that use in the generation of heat and, and, uh, and electricity would also be taken from that 5%. So it's not it's that 5% um, of, of, of in transport alone. Um, to improve the greenhouse gas performance of new installations uh, from, from now until 2020, um, by uh, by requiring 60% uh, for new, for new installations, um, and encourage the, the uptake of next generation biofuels and uh, their production um, between uh, by offering multiple counting. We'll come back to that later, and improve reporting of emissions due to indirect land use change, and um, it, I suppose it's a reporting of indirect land use change and not accounting for. And also critical and not to be overlooked is to protect the investments that made to date and in the pipeline for uh, biofuel, uh, in, uh, biofuel production uh, facilities within the European Union. Um, it's been, the, the, this file has been progressed um, during our presidency through an ad hoc working group of environment and, and, and energy. Um, I suppose it, it's, it's co-chaired um, and um, it will be discussed next at the Energy Council later this month and again in the Environment Council 
um, in, in March. Um, and there are further working party uh, meetings um, scheduled. We've, we've already had one read through of a complete read through of a short but very difficult uh, directive. Um, and there, are, as you can imagine, there are a number of very complicated and surprising, some, some irreconcilable at the, at the moment um, differences or, or, or are very difficult uh, to, to surmount. Um, a number of member states are still arriving at national uh, positions and uh, taking into account environmental, agricultural, industrial, um, and energy um, concerns. Um, there's also there's the concerns about um, balancing investments and jobs uh, and job creation in the Europe, European Union and achieving uh, the very very real um, environmental concerns. So the views. Um, uh, across the whole spectrum and from those who, who believe the directive doesn't go far enough and to those who think it goes too far. Um, so uh, another issue that of concern is the impact that the 5% cap will have on achieving the 10% target and the cost of achieving that um, and whether or not it is feasible to do so in, in the current economic circumstances facing the, facing the European Union. There's also concerns have been heard that the 5% cap has not been transposed or is not reflected in the fuel quality directive. The Commission has asserted that, that that is because the range of options open to achieving the 6% saving in the fuel quality directive go beyond renewable energy and include improved efficiencies and, uh, and flaring technologies. Um, multiple counting has, has again um, elicited a, a spectrum of, of opinions uh, ranging from um, disagreement as to what should be included, indeed whether or not there should be a positive list or just a, a, a description. There's concerns about the impact multiple counting will have on national targets. And in that, that regard, for example, where, where a member state to succeed in developing sufficient four quadruple counted biofuels to meet the 5%, the, the remaining 5%, one could achieve the 10% the, the target with 6.25% in, in energy terms. And that, three, that deficit of 3.75% 3, 3 would, would, would rest with the heating and cooling um, sectors as well as the electricity. There would also be a knock-on impact upon the real greenhouse gas savings. Um, and that's obviously a real concern across the, the, this, this spectrum at the moment, possibly for different reasons. There's also an issue with fraud. Um, and because of multiple counting, um, there would be a real incentive to um, I suppose label something as it as it is not um, quite topical, I suppose, uh, at the moment. And uh, there is also issues regarding um, impacts on agriculture. Um, other member states are arguing that there's no ILOC factors in their in their countries. And then, I suppose fundamentally as well, a number of member states have, 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 have very serious concerns that the, the, the ILOC is not taken into account for sustainability and it's merely reporting at this stage. The complexity uh, and, and, and diversity of views is reflected in um, the emerging views in the European Parliament from the ITRI Committee of the Industry and uh, Research Energy Committee, um, probably taking what could be perceived as a more pragmatic view um, saying that they've got concerns regarding the target and the impact the target would have on investment and jobs. Uh, to the Environment Committee, um, believing that the proposal should, doesn't go far enough and that uh, the, the uh, ILOC should be a factor in, in sustainability criteria. The committees are going to vote on this in, in the summer, uh, meaning that um, uh, the Irish Presidency will not be engaging with with the, in any kind of uh, formal sense with the, with the European Parliament um, and that discussion is, is like to, to start during the Lithuanian presidency. So the next step will be that um, Ireland will, we will have to agree um, a, some sort of revised text that is agreeable to, um, um, to the Council um, and that this will be um, uh, referred then to the Lithuanian presidency to, to continue discussions at council. I don't see this being resolved uh, given the complexity and the divergence of views uh, before year end. Thank you. Very good. Thank you.